my co-op, I managed a trap gang numbering around 200, and I filled the sternman position on my father's boat. Um, my responsibilities included maintaining bait and fuel inventories, doing general boat maintenance, building lobster traps, setting gear, hauling gear, and selling lobsters. Uh, my project title was Business Finances and Marketing Options. And for my project, I prepared financial statements, including a statement of cash flows and balance sheets for each 15-day period that I was fishing. And I also did a marketing analysis for three different marketing options that you can have as a commercial officer. Uh, three key things that I learned from the co-op was that focusing on alternative marketing could greatly increase, increase my business's profitability. I learned how to use Excel to prepare balance sheets, statement cash flows, um, and I identified alternative marketing options including wedding and party catering, direct consumer sales and cook lobster sales and in order to do this my father and I split on a underwater <coughs> storage dock so we could store lobsters rather than having to sell at the end of every day so I was able to target alternative markets. If I was to make some suggestions to future co-op students I would say follow your interests. The reason that I chose a, uh, a co-op like this is because I don't know that I won't keep fishing after I'm done here and I just want to make my business run as efficiently as possible and try to recognize what it is that you want to pursue upon graduation and attempt to find a co-op that will better prepare you in that industry. And don't be scared of not finding a co-op because uh, everybody I know always found one and if you use the resources that are at your disposal you shouldn't have any problem at all. Be open to new experiences because in the worst case scenario you will learn what it is that you do not want to do. That's all. located in my hometown in Easton, Maryland. Probably never heard of it. Um, it was called Maverick Transport Incorporated. It was a third party logistics broker, so we had customers calling in that needed freight moved, and we would find trucks to cover that load, but we didn't have our own trucks. Um, my responsibilities included dispatching. I would talk to the drivers when they were empty, loaded, and then empty again. They would call me if they had any problems. I didn't have a technically like project title. My boss just asked me to uh, see what my team needed um, to be improved and then kind of go with that. So I focused on one of our main customers, Soterra Defense Logistics, and how to decrease the time it took to cover their loads. And I actually improved the time by a lot. Um, <laughs> I would say that the three things I learned is even in a professional environment, things will always go to plan. If there's a problem, you have to think quickly on your feet and figure out how to solve that problem. I would say that um, where I worked, the uh, atmosphere wasn't the best one. So the attitudes of employees that you work with can really change the way that you see your work. I noticed that other people were slacking off, so I'm going to do the same. but. You have to keep in mind that if you want to make a good impression, you have to kind of keep up with your work ethic and not other people's. Um, there was one employee that I worked with that always talked down to people in the office, and that leads to my third thing, always be conscious of what you say when you're working with people, because it always gets back to your boss or the president of the organization in my, in my case. Um, the one suggestion that I want to stress to everybody is don't wait till the last second to get a co-op. I know some of my friends were worried at the end of the year that they didn't have something um, lined up and I actually started looking and calling companies over Thanksgiving break. And then the companies that were interested, I set up interviews um, whenever they wanted me to come back uh, based on when I would be home, such as winter break or spring break. So it's definitely worth the time and the effort to have something lined up. <coughs>
was fine for me because I was in for the summer, so that wasn't bad, but um, just something to consider when you're looking for a co op. Um, the internship lasted for 12 weeks. Um, I was expected to do a research project. I was to look into recruiting and retaining uh, Generation Y. And during my time there, I was able to actually get a chance to kind of get a feel for every department. I know a lot of other my other students, they weren't able to kind of try every department that I was able to, which was really good. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned before, my whole project was recruiting and retaining Generation Y. I learned a lot of things working at Sam's Club. I actually really liked it. Um, one of the things that I learned was that communication is a huge part of it. Um, there were times when the communication was lacking, so that caused a lot of problems. Um, some things that I suggest for the future. Um, for my project, I actually uh, we did something different this year. Normally, students are able to put their own co-op, but this year they kind of gave us our own co-ops. And they, at the beginning, they were supposed to uh, tell me what my co-op was, but I didn't find out until like halfway through. So it was really the lack of communication was there. So like one of my suggestions when you are looking for co-ops and like, begin your co-ops is to make sure you have a clear understanding of what's expected of you throughout the whole time. Because when I was working there, like I was able to tour every department. But so make sure you have a clear understanding. As everyone mentioned before, like it's really important to just start re start start researching now. Start 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 talking to companies. Figure out where you want to go. That's it.
from scratch and learned how to collect and analyze data required for the research project. And before I went there, I had just a little knowledge about the uh, market research. And after the co-op, it was really interesting to see what, what's that market research industry all about. Uh, I think it's highly recommended to take a course in Excel because I was uh, had an assignment about Excel that I have no idea how to do, so I had to learn from scratch, which took, which took, which took a while and a lot of time. Uh, another suggestion would be uh, get ready to work, be proactive, and be aware, be aware of the company attire, because that gets a little embarrassing sometimes. And <laughs> have fun and come, uh, come to the workplace with that motivation. Different facility um, had a different culture, 
kind of different dress codes and everything. So it's kind of interesting to have to adapt to all those different situations. Um, one thing that I put down for my three key learning things is that is for I feel you kind of learn the importance of job characteristics and hiring people based on that, like not to judge. We can't have certain biases. So while we were in recruiting, like yes, these people might have these qualifications, but do they meet? what the job characteristics have. And so we made our decisions based on that. And one cool thing that I got to do is that I learned how to operate and maneuver the bugs and the tar the <laughs> barges and tugs. There we go. Um, I actually got to drive the tugs and pull out a string of barges and maneuver them. And for like, it was pretty, it was pretty <laughs> awesome. And the whole time I was like, why was my SP on there? One advice that I have to say is start early with your co-op process. Um, look at companies you might be interested in and apply early to those. And also, when you do start applying, just go for those interviews just for practice. By chance, I almost didn't go and interview with Ingram Barge because I was like, I don't, really, I don't really want to go to Kentucky. By chance, I went and interviewed with them. And that's one of, the, one of the few offers that I got, and I had a great experience with them for that. I would just suggest, um, if you, for me personally, I didn't want to be in Maine or New England. I want to branch out and kind of see what else is out there. So my advice would be try and find something that you're able to travel. You're able to go to so many different places and seats and see so many different new things. And I think that's really important um, to do during your club. You have the chance. So The other thing that we both agreed on when we first got there, too, is learn to go with the flow. We, we jumped in, we had no idea what we were doing, but learning to be able to like, just ride it out and just not stress out about things and panic was one skill that we kind of came back with. That was just... Jackson Laboratory. It's in Bar Harbor. Um, it's a research facility, uh, for those of you that don't know. Um, they do testing on mice um, for cancer, diabetes, obesity. Um, they use mice because mice have 95% of the same genes as humans. Fun fact. <laughs> um, so it kind of sounds sad, but yeah. Um, I did a cost-benefit analysis um, for my project. Oh, I worked in the transportation department. I forgot to mention that. Um, they breed mice and then ship them, so I was a logistics intern. Um, I also traveled an hour and a half because I lived at home. Don't do that. I mean, it was awful. Very bad. Um, I would also say network and ask questions as much as possible while you're there. Um, and I suggest you start researching and applying to companies now. Okay, my name is Ashley Blanchett. Um, I did my co-op this summer with Kraft Foods, um, more specifically Nabisco. And mine is a little bit different. Um, they actually did away with their formal uh, co-op program a couple of years ago. And um, I've actually had this job for almost three years now. And I, don't, I definitely didn't want to lose it. So um, I did what I could to continue on and do my co-op with the company and see what I could do to improve things on my territory. And my project <coughs> was actually um, to increase the sales on my territory. and. Um, so what I did basically was just day to day, see what I could do um, as far as getting more product in the store, getting displays out there, um, getting coupons on things, um, basically anything to get um, the product to look attractive to the customer so they buy it. Um, I had a lot of responsibility. Um, for a few weeks, the um, sales representative that was on my territory would um, go on vacation or have days off, so I was asked to kind of step up and take over. So that put me in a leadership position and it also gave me tons of responsibility. I actually had to put in the orders for the stores and order thousands of dollars of product a week um, for four different stores. 
Um, so it was really kind of a huge learning experience and I really ended up liking it. Um, some suggestions, um, definitely keep all your class materials. I found myself going back and referencing them so often. Um, you might not think they'll, you know, they'll, they'll be that helpful, but they definitely are. Um, definitely go back to them. And if you do, do um, end up doing something that I, like I did, um, every time you go into the store, you need to talk to the managers. They need to know that you're there and that you both know exactly what's going on that day, um, what products are on sale, any price changes, et cetera. Um, and definitely use your time wisely. Um, some stores need to be um, serviced before, say, noon, um, just because of how much uh, business they do during the day, just so that your shelves aren't empty. And um, just, you know, because you're going to several stores during the day, so just need to use it wisely. <laughs> Target in South Portland this summer for 10 weeks. Um, I was mostly responsible for the guest experience side and the front end. So I would be managing talent for the team leaders up there, tasking them out for the day, for the week. And then more importantly, I was responsible for the Target red card and driving conversion. And conversion is the amount of um, people that sign up for the red card, depending on how many come in per day, and per week, per month, per year. So um, our, our goal was 2%, and so we were at like a 1.34, something like that. So my project specifically was to get that up to 2.0. Um, my final like, project title kind of thing was um, my final walk with my district team leader, who is like my boss's boss. So I had to walk around and speak to anything that was wrong in the store, call our opportunities, and um, address how we're going to fix them, along with knowing all the numbers, all the metrics, everything like that. So it was a lot of information. Target has an overwhelming amount of lingo and special talk that they do. So that was like the most challenging thing to kind of adapt to. But um, I loved my experience at Target. I actually have a job there after graduation already. so. It's a great experience. I recommend it to any of you guys that are interested in retail. Um, I learned most <laughs> about time management because that's kind of not really my thing. So um, managing my time to make sure that everything was done um, on time and with like quality. So that was good. And then uh, networking internally and externally. So I, I emailed a lot of the other um, executives in training and already executives in other stores around me asking for advice and questions and stuff like that. So um, that's really important. And suggestions for you guys going into Target. Um, use the classes this semester and next semester to your advantage to practice and improve on your time management skills because you're going to be swamped with work with um, Professor DeWitt and Potaker and everyone. So use your time wisely and um, it'll help out in the long run. And then also to ask meaningful questions. I actually did my internship with a, another intern, but she was pharmacy. And she was a little loopy and she'd like ask questions that didn't make sense. So like no, ask questions, but have quality behind them and have kind of like a sense of what you're asking. So don't just ask questions, ask questions. And then also take risks and make mistakes because it's the best way to learn and target really goes strong on that. That is all. Hi, my name is o. Owen Hicks, and this summer I worked at System Logistics Corporation in Lewiston, Maine. And they cre create automated material handling systems for warehouses and distribution centers. And during my co-op, I managed the spare parts inventory by, cre by creating a, sa a, a safety stock system. And I also purchased spare parts and answered cu uh, customer service phone calls. And my project title was Spare Parts Inventory Management. And three key things that, that, that I learned was I learned how, how, how to make mistakes and then learn from them. 
uh, I was given a lot of freedom in my co-op, co and I, I basically had to, they gave me databases and I had to pretty much make sense of them, so I didn't get much help on that part, but, uh, and my second learning is I learned how to ask for help. Uh, I went around to managers and I was able to get the help that I needed, and I learned how to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, which was kind of a struggle for me at first, but I got into the routine. Oh, and, uh, but I woke up and I got in, in, into the routine. And uh, suggestions for future co op students is to start searching now. Because I made the mistake of waiting to the last minute. I got mine at uh, June 15th. So you don't want to do that. I would suggest uh, probably next week go out and try to find something local. And uh, also, wait for an opportunity. Uh, don't wait for an opportunity to call into your lab, you have to go up and get it. And the co-op is more, more than just about fulfilling a college requirement. It's about ma making connections and making a difference during the your co-op. Co That's it. Well, when a lot of stress? What? A lot of stress not finding one? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <clears throat> so guys, uh, my name's Tom School. Uh, this summer I worked down in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, working with the Hub Group. The Hub Group is just like a container management, it's an intermodal system. And uh, basically what I did there is work with the uh, equipment. Um, my project was a container management system, so I was trying to track all the containers and trying to you know, better use, utilize that. Um, some of my responsibilities were to manage and monitor Hub's containers and the equipment in the southeast region. Um, uh, dispute containers and uh, when we lost them I had to kind of go out of my way and kind of find out where they were and get them pulled back and terminated back at the rail. Um, some of the things I learned uh, was work well in a team environment, um, learn how to work well under pressure. Uh, the first time I was thrown into there I was given all the responsibility for the southeast region with the uh, containers and kind of having to uh, give them out to all the customers and got freaked out, wasn't really used to that. But it was a good uh, learning, learning experience. And the other one was how to work with the intermodal uh, business and the industry. Because I wasn't really sure how it actually operates with the trains and uh, the ships and how they all inter interconnect. Um, and my suggestion to you guys is to seek out the co-op early, like everyone's been saying. Um, be receptive to positive criticism. Love it. International Summer in Beverly, Massachusetts. Um, I worked as a uh, pretty much as the assistant to the assistant project engineer in the new builds department. It's um, <coughs> Steamship Lines is a uh, self unloading dry bulk firm. So, what they do is they take these ships that can self unload um, their dry bulk cargo, and it, uh, it's like they ship coal, grain, things like that, and they discharge to places where there's not really necessarily the port infrastructure. Um, my responsibilities included uh, preparing return on investment calculations for various parts, uh, which was my project. Uh, I did a return on investment calculation for a variable frequency drive. You don't have to know what that is. It was really cool to learn about. I did absolutely nothing logistics related this summer, and I had an amazing time doing it. Um, I was more of like an engineer. Um, it, was, it, it was completely thrown into something where I thought I was going to be involved with logistics, and I wasn't. Um, three things that I wanted. The three key learnings I had, uh, stay quiet and listen. Um, you may do all of your research on this company, and you may think you know everything going in there. You don't, so especially in the environment that I was in, just sit down, listen, learn. That's one thing you can do. Uh, pay attention in class and go to class, uh, especially Professor Meyer, Professor Jane, Dr. Potter, every single one of them go to class. The more you go, the more you're gonna learn, the better you're gonna go off, you're gonna be going to your co-op, and you're gonna come off a little more intelligent. And uh, network, um, network, network, network. Uh, I do it constantly. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. You get to meet new people, make a lot of contacts, and you're actually going to be more successful because of it. And ask questions, but also have a great work ethic. Um, I got told this summer of my job, uh, asking too many questions is actually really disruptive in the workplace. 
Um, but if you go off, ask questions, and then actually try, instead of asking more questions, uh, to get easy answers, um, it, trying harder makes you look better. So. All right, thanks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron St. Pierre. I spend my summer with uh, Sam's Club. I was at the uh, Walmart headquarters that's in Bentonville, Arkansas. It's a wholesale retailer. And my uh, job title, I guess, would be a supply chain slash replenishment intern. So my main project was to optimize the freight flow and supply chain for relocated clubs. So essentially, Sam's Club has the opportunity to relocate a club if they feel it's performing poorly. When they do this, they're obviously putting down a new club. This, they have to put inventory in it. So the old club gets stuck with an excess amount of inventory and they weren't doing a uh, great job at dispersing it throughout the market as they could. So I developed a plan kind of early on in my co-op that saved them around uh, $6 million for next year that was recently implemented by the uh, senior vice president and that led to my first job offer. So that was pretty cool. Some of my uh, key learnings were employers appreciate if you leave with tangible accomplishments. This is all about building your resume. Basically, you can say you did X at this time. It kind of gives you a leg up on the competition when you're going up against other interns or other people. My second one, as Oscar just said, is to network. It's uh, pretty vital to stress the significance of, of that. That's what kind of leads to people getting their first job offers. and after that. And to be successful, you must be able to adapt to change. I lived 21 years in Down East Maine that I got through in Northwest Arkansas, not really knowing a single person. And contrary to popular belief, Northwest Arkansas is a pretty big city area. It's not like the rest of Arkansas. And uh, some of my suggestions, discover not only what your company does well, but find out where it shows opportunity for improvement. So once you can recognize where you can make a direct impact, commit to fixing any issues you can, show initiative and dedication, it will assure your success, don't do, uh, don't go halfway on anything, make sure you give your full effort no matter what you do, and my last suggestion is to um, look at options outside of Maine, you severely limit yourself if you decide you are going to stay in Maine or stay in the state that you are from.
My name is Margaret May Lambert, and I had a state of Maine internship through the uh, Department of Transportation in Bangor. Um, pretty much what their project that they had me doing for the summer was inventorying of assets on roadways. And by assets, what that means is basically doing a physical check on the condition of every catch basin, every culvert, every guardrail on the side of the road or along different routes. So basically, I got paid to go play in traffic all summer. What we ended up having to do was, if you've ever seen people on the side of the road, you have a five foot crowbar, literally, to try and pick up the cover of a catch basin that weighs at least 100 pounds when you're, when you're uh, lifting it up to get a physical inspection on the condition of the basin itself, the condition of the pipes, what direction they run in, and then you have to go and measure out the distance in between. And as I came to find out later on that um, this had absolutely nothing to do with my degree plan. They actually needed someone that was going to college for engineering. Oh well. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I tried to do because I saw it was a complete and total waste of time to have to try and figure out if the catch basin or the culvert, for example, was actually already in their system. They didn't have any way of identifying them. One of the projects that I was trying to come up with was a way of uh, tagging every single asset, whether it be through the use of, say, a passive RFID tag, or perhaps for um, a little metal seal tag like you would use on the back of a, a semi-truck. So that way you'd be able to look and see, as you're looking in the system, you have a series of numbers. Okay, this one's here, this one's here, we're missing one, where is it? Oh, five years ago they straightened the road out and this catch basin that's supposed to be here and being maintained is now in the middle of somebody's lawn and completely overgrown. Now you gotta go find it. So that project basically got sidelined about nine weeks into my internship in favor of they're wanting me to focus on scour critical bridges. And what scour critical bridges are, are bridges that basically are at risk of collapsing. If there's any kind of a flood, you know, high water, that type of thing. So they had me try and figure out how to go about monitoring them because what happens, say, when you've got heavy rains and flood, you end up having to send someone out every two hours to go look at this placard that's on the bridge and, well, uh, I suggested doing some, some monitoring equipment, basically just like an inexpensive uh, camera setup. Anyway, uh, three learning objectives were RFID tags were useless for what was actually needed because they wanted to focus later on more on scale critical bridges. Uh, as I mentioned, they needed an engineering student, not a business student and adjust fire as necessary, which read that what I'm referring to there is you don't know what kind of direction you may get pulled into. You just have to be able to go with whatever it is, try and do your best, try and learn the, the knowledge you need very quickly. And my suggestions, uh, make sure, especially if you get a state of Maine internship, that you're being put in a position that actually applies to the degree program that you're taking. Uh, also, make sure that they have, have some kind of a plan to give you some kind of management training because they didn't, there's no communication on actually training me for any kind of management position or shadowing anyone. And the other thing I would say would be that when it comes to trying to find the job that you want, call companies, interview people, and ask them. I'm in, your, I'm in the situation you're in 20, 30, 40 years ago. What would you recommend for me to be able to work in your position years from now? What would, you, what would be necessary uh, that I should do? And not only that, but when you call different companies, even if they don't have an internship, you may decide to, uh, they, they may decide that uh, they really should have an internship and maybe you can create an internship for yourself and for other people. David, you want to go? I'd love to go. I wasn't on the sheet. I didn't know what was going on. Let me out. All right, I'm uh, David Raffi. I did an internship with Raffi's Renovation Services this summer, a uh, business I started. 
Josh Radford started off by mending it with uh, saying, do what you want to do and don't be uh, strong armed into something you don't want to do. I mean, yeah, you go and get an internship with a company you don't really think you want to be in and then you find out it's great. But if you have a serious passion to do something, do it. Because it was the best summer I've had so far. Um, I managed and ran my own renovation company. That's what it was supposed to be, but it basically turned into me being a human resources consultant for many different businesses. I would get phone calls on a Sunday and have to figure out where I was going to find five guys to go dig a ditch on Wednesday through the next Sunday. Um, time management skills are really important to learn because I didn't really do good in that. I don't like time management. I do everything at the last minute. But you need to do stuff ahead of time because the co-op I got fell through the first week I was there. And then I had to do this co-op, which is still cool. I liked it a lot. Um, start early. Have fun. You'll be seniors next year. And you want to be a senior because it's scary coming back and not knowing if you're going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, you want to go? Sure. Casey, you're not huh? a sheep. I know, I'm not a sheep. I got left out too. Really? Yeah, I got left out. Sorry. Uh, my name is Casey Manning. Uh, I did my co op this summer with the Samoset Resort in Rockport, Maine. It wasn't exactly where I wanted to be, but it was my fallback, so it kind of worked out. Um, I mostly worked with the managers and just in uh, guest services and everything, just making sure that the guests had everything they needed, made sure that they were enjoying their stay to the fullest. Um, the project I did this summer, I did a lot of marketing for the Samson Resort itself, just like minor things that my manager thought would be helpful to the resort. No real numbers came through this summer, but he said that it should show up like in the next summer or whatever, so if people search it, they'll just notice it on there. Um, uh, a lot that I learned this summer from the resort was a lot to do with guest services, uh, restaurant management, that's the managers that I worked with down in the food and beverage department. And any suggestions, just uh, definitely start early. So, you know, like I did, I put a lot of, uh, lot of eggs in one basket and it didn't really work out for me in the end, so kind of fell through. And any, definitely any uh, interviews you can get, take them, because all the practice you can get, it's going to definitely make you a better interviewer in the end. Just so, uh, master your resume, all that, so. Yes, that's it. Before you guys go, I just wanted to say to the seniors.